Hello, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I am the owner of ScienceInHydroponics.com and today we are going to be talking about water content sensors, also known as moisture sensors, why they are important and how you need to calibrate them in order to use them properly. So, why is moisture sensing important? When you have a media like this that I have here, when you water it, it gets fully saturated with water, right? It gets wet. And then, how do you know when to irrigate next? You need to have some measure of how much water the media has lost so that you know that it is time to add water again. There are several different ways to do this. Moisture sensors are one of the most accessible ways uh, and they can be easily and cheaply deployed depending on the type of sensor you use. Now, there are some sensors that are resistive that try, to, that try to measure moisture in the media by trying to measure the resistance of the media, the electrical resistance of the media. These sensors are terrible because current flows through the sensor and it will usually destroy the sensor if you have nutrients in it because uh, the nutrient solution reacts with the electrodes. But there are other sensors like, for example, this very cheap capacitive sensor. And these sensors, what they measure is the change in the capacitance of the media because water has a very different dielectric constant compared to media. So the reading from the sensor changes as there is more or less water in the media. However, the problem we have then is what, does the what do the values that the sensor gives us mean? Because the sensor gives us a reading in millivolts Let's say this sensor reads 300 millivolts. Does this mean that we have a lot of water, too little water, should we irrigate? How do we know? And this is why the calibration of the sensor is very important in order to use it. Because otherwise, interpreting the values of the sensor becomes really, really hard. So in order to calibrate the sensor, we need to follow a calibration process, which is what I am going to show you through the rest of this video. So you will need our, I, I mean, you will not need all these things, but I'm gonna show you how I will do it. So what I bought is that I bought this thing. This is a scale. This is the moisture sensor. This is the media. And this is basically an Arduino MKR, MKR1010 that I bought to be able to transmit the values of these sensors to my uh, my Koto server in my Wi-Fi network. So what is the idea of the calibration? In the calibration process, what we'll do is that we'll take the media, put it here, and then we'll measure both the weight and the sensor reading as a function of time. As the media dries, it will lose water, and we will know exactly how much water it has lost because we are tracking the weight, and we'll know what that weight loss means in terms of a reading of the sensor. So. We will start first um, with very dry media. So the first step is to have your media and to dry it. So I will usually, this media that I'm using here as an example is a mixture of 50% rice holes and 50% sand, river sand. And what I'm going to do is that I will dry the media on, a, on the stove top so that it's very, very dry and it has no water at all. If you have raw pool or any other media, you can uh, dry it in the oven as well. Just make sure you heat it to a temperature that is like 10 degrees above the boiling point of water for an hour or so, and then all the water will be gone. And on a stove top, it is faster, but you can risk burning the media if you're not careful, which has happened to me. <laughs> so what we will do is that we will dry it first. Once it is very dry, so when it is, once it is dry, we will weigh it once to figure out what, what the dry weight of the media is. After that, what I generally do is that I put the media here. So, so you put the dry media here before you measure, of course. So we put the dry media here. And what I'm gonna do is weigh this. And this is the dry weight of the media. Then I add water until it gets saturated and it drips. I let it drip so that all the excess water comes out. Then I put it here and I start taking the readings. Now, it is also true that you might find it hard to put the sensor inside the media um, after the fact. So it is usually easier to put the 
sensor in the media and then uh, fill, fill it up wherever you're gonna take the measurement. The place where you take the measurement doesn't matter that much provided that there's holes in the bottom where water can flow through. It is better if you use whichever um, container you will be using for your grow. So, dry weight, then add water, wait till all the excess water comes out, put it in, put it here, and then record all the weight measurements that we get and all the um, measurements from the sensor. You will see that we will be getting a measurement of the sensors, um, of, the, of both sensors, and this will allow us to determine what the values of the sensor mean. So we will be able to tell uh, that a reading of, say, 400 millivolts means that there's 60% of the water that, can, that the media can retain still present in it. So just follow me through this calibration process. Okay, so welcome to Media Cooking 101. So we're going to be, I'm gonna do it with this media on a stove top because this media can be dried like this fairly easily. I just need to heat it to a point where all the sand is dry, which is pretty easy to see when the, dry, the sand has all dried. And if you have a media like rock wool, then you want to use an oven for this. Just set the oven to a little bit higher than the boiling point of water and then that was going to be fine, leave it there for an hour. Cocoa, you can do that way, but you can also do it like this, uh, depending on the, the qualities of the cocoa that you're using. So basically the idea is to heat it up and just monitor this, heat it for a while until it's all dry. Uh, if you want to be more precise about it, you can weigh it, you can dry it, then you can weigh it and then dry it again and ensure that the weight doesn't change much. If it changes, then you're either don't have enough water left or you're burning whatever media you're using. Two things that you want to avoid. we got it out now make sure you let this cool before you weigh it or before you add water to it I'm gonna leave it to cool down and then we'll perform the experiment Okay, so let's talk about the processing of the calibration data and how you can actually use this data to interpret the readings of the moisture sensor. So after you perform the calibration process, you will have basically two columns, one with uh, the readings of the sensor in millivolts, in the case of the capacitive sensor that I used, but it might be a sensor in some other units, depending on which sensor you used and how you've read the values. 
And you will also have a mass column, which is the just which contains the readings from the scale that you used to perform the experiment. Now, what we need to derive from these two is the moisture content. And these can be calculated first from the dry weight that we measured, which is the dry weight of the entire setup. Uh, in this case, this is the dry weight of the media plus uh, the container plus the weight of the beaker that I put it on, if you saw the experiment. So once I have this, I can basically use the maximum weight I have here, which contains the all the water that the media can take. So that's 100 saturation as my denominator. So it's the max weight that I have here minus the dry weight of the media and the other parts of the setup that will give me the max amount of water that the media could retain. I can then use this as a denominator and then in the numerator I'll put the mass minus the dry weight and that will give me the amount of water that is present at any point in time. So by dividing this by the maximum amount of water possible then I get the percentage of water that uh, I have, so the moisture content in terms of the percentage of the maximum amount of water that the media could hold um, at any given time. So you can see here how this actually dries uh, as a function of time. You can see that we start close to 100. We do not start at 100 because we should, but we had this odd reading here. So we could actually um, but I mean, it's it's very close. This is because the errors on the scale are pretty significant when we start and um, because the loss of water is so small. So yeah, we started 98.99 instead of 100, but you'll see in the graph that this doesn't make a lot of a difference. Then as time goes on, the media dries. You can see that the sensor values also go up. So the sensor started reading 361 millivolts and it started going up as the media dried, you can see the weight is the water content, the weight is decreasing and the water content is also decreasing. And the experiment ended a couple of days later when we were at 62%. And you can see here a graph I made where you can actually see here the water content as a function of the sensor value. You want to plot it this way so that we have an equation that allows us to predict the water content given some signal. So the, the sensor signal is our independent variable because it's what we will be measuring and then our dependent variable is the water content which we will be calculating. So we can put the equation here minus 0.2776 times the value that is read plus 200.060 and let's say we read 300 millivolts then we know that this we cannot read because this is outside the sensor range because at full saturation um, at full saturation our sensor reading was just 361 so it needs to be in between those bounds so let's say we have 400 a 400 reading this would mean we have an 88 percent then let's say we have a 450 reading then this would be 75 percent and you can see that we go all the way down to around 60 and it is fairly linear in this regime. Uh, as you can see, the readings follow a straight graph. There is a lot of noise. This is more because of the scale than because of the moisture content sensor, but the scale is more noisy. So because we're losing very small amounts of water uh, every, every hour. So for example, if we go to 480, we have 66, which is around here. But then uh, to measure lower, we would have had to leave the experiment for longer so that the media dried more. Uh, but I didn't want to run the experiment for more days because, well, it's all the same. You just would run it for longer and then you would get an extension of this. However, it will get nonlinear at some point with capacitive sensors. So at some point as the media dries, you would get to a point where it's no longer linear. But the most important portion is this one, because when you water, you always go to 100% irrigation when you water to saturation. So you want, you will start here and then having this region plotted like this is useful because then you can know, well, I'm going to water every time I get to 70%. And then you can actually monitor the readings and then water whenever you get to that point. Which water content point you should water at 
is a question for another video. Uh, but the, having a calibrated water content sensor is a great way to know at a very low cost where you are in terms of how your media is drying and whether you should water or not. Okay. Okay, so you just saw how I calibrated a moisture sensor and what the entire process entails. This is not the way it's done in labs. So this is a way to calibrate the sensors that I came up with that takes a lot of time. You saw the time lapse was probably a day and a half and we only got to like 40% of the calibration measurement. And if you want to calibrate the full curve, you'll need to, well, spend longer because you need the water to naturally dry. Of course, in a normal crop setting, the plant will dry the media a lot faster, but in a, in a calibration setting, we don't have the plant drawing water from the media, so it dries slower. In a lab, what you, you do is very different. What you do is that you do measured water additions, then you get weights, then you oven dry, and then you do this step a lot of times. So it's faster, you can do it in like a couple hours, but it's way more time consuming. So, uh, but it's way less time consuming. Um, so we're not going to do it that way because it's more complicated. And this is the way that I came up with where I can do it at home and I can get the calibration curves that are equivalent to the ones you would get at a lab. At least in my humble opinion and for the accuracy measure, for the accuracy that we require. In any case, these, these sensors are rather cheap. You can get them, you can see in the description, they go for, I mean, I guess you can get half a dozen for less than 20 bucks or something like that. So these are very good additions. Of course, these sensors have all this circuitry up here, so they are not rugged. So if you want rugged versions of these sensors, then you'll need to use conformal coating and do some modifications to make them, well, more rugged for actual crop applications. But this shows you how you can easily, easily, or how you can in practice calibrate a moisture sensor. Once you have your moisture sensors calibrated, which means you need to calibrate the sensor for every media type you're going to use, but once you have it them calibrated, you can then just use them in, in your crop and you can know exactly how much water the media has lost uh, as your crop progresses. And as you irrigate, you'll see how the media dries and you'll be able to interpret the reading of the sensor and to say, well, the media has now lost 20% of the water or it has lost 60% of the maximum water capacity it can hold. I will water. It will be a lot of information. And timing your irrigations properly is a lot of your, uh, where a lot of your yield goes. So if you can properly time irrigations, that will go a long way in increasing your yields and increasing, in increasing the productivity of your crop as a whole and increasing your consistency. This is especially important for crops that are cultivated in um, big amounts of media. So in like drain to waste setups or setups of this type, this of course is not very useful for NFT setups or other types of hydroponic setups. So I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Of course, remember to please like, subscribe and share. And I hope you like all these time lapsing we're doing. It's uh, painful, but <laughs> well, we try. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye bye.